You know what? I don't always feel the need to be right. But when I am, I am. What can I say? <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine, it's season eight, episode three. Listen, I told y'all about that Anila. I said, mm, I got my good eye on her, didn't I? Didn't I say I had my good eye on her? Anila, really? Really? See, I said you were perfectly suited to be friends with Toya. You literally made a whole situation bad and then made it all about you. Kudos. Messy as hell. We gonna talk about it anyway. Let's just go right here. First off, Jackie, Simone, Eugene, and Contessa. We see them doing these really early morning, like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, going in and leaving work. And you could just see that they are literally, they are tired. They are tired. You can see it all in their faces that they're tired. And then when it comes to Eugene, you know, Eugene is an emergency doctor. So you see with Eugene, there's, I see the fatigue, but I also see fear. You can see the fear in Eugene's face. Um, you know, he said, you know, sometimes I used to see like 20, 25 clients a day, 25 patients in one day. And now I may only see 10, but they all got COVID. So it's a child. It's a lot. That it's a lot, you know. And we hear the stories and that kind of thing, but it to see see it like this and they're chronicling it, and you see them. It's not like an interview. You actually see them going to work and stuff. It's it's a lot, but you could see the fear in Eugene's face and the other ones. You could just see they were just tired. So literally, like, you know, hats off to you guys to all of the medical workers, period, but you know, it, it, it's a lot, it's a lot, it was, that was kind of rough, get you right there, anyway, um, Dr. Heavenly, we see her with Miracle, you, Miracle was the young lady who ended up being at a peaceful protest and ended up getting her teeth busted out by a police officer, she said, you know, everything happened really, really fast, she doesn't know whether it was him punching her or her phone that actually smashed her in the mouth that made her teeth. However, out of order, out of order, she, you know, peaceful protest and you end up losing teeth at the hands of the police? I don't think so. Out of order. But Dr. Heavenly did the pro bono work. She actually flew her in. She reached out to her, flew her into Atlanta, took care of her teeth and everything. Um, I don't even want to get on a rant about it. You know, that ain't even what I do on my channel. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move on. Kudos to you, uh, Dr. Heavenly. Good work. You know, Dr. Heavenly does that though. Like every season we see someone that Dr. Heavenly, she does a lot of pro bono work. And I, I don't think a lot of people know, you know, again, she does a lot of work in the, the neighborhood and, and for the people. And of course she doesn't publicize a lot of that. That's why I always say, you know, it's always up and down with me and Dr. Heavenly. Dr. Heavenly got a lot of ways that I don't like, but Dr. Heavenly got a lot of ways that I do admire. She's just not a bad person. She's just messy, <laughs> just so messy ass. But again, she's a doctor, you know. I, how much can you really not like a doctor of any type, it, it's kind of hard not to like them. They, they, being a doctor, you have some attributes about you that deserve liking, no matter what you do other than that. Something about you is likable. Something about you is good, or you wouldn't even be in that field of work to help people. But I know for a fact, I see it 
in social media. I don't know her personally, but I do see it and I do hear talk of it. My ear and my eye be in the street. And I be seeing you, Dr. Heavenly. I be seeing your ass around doing good. You don't always be cutting a fool. But I always, I see you when you be cutting a fool too. You know, I'm going to call you out on a girl. You know your ass is messy and mean, honey. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna say nothing because I'm messy and mean too, but it just, <laughs> but I'm watching you. I'm watching you, Dr. Heavenly. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, but that was good work she did on Miracle. She looked beautiful. She's a beautiful girl. And um, thank you, uh, Dr. Heavenly, for repairing her smile. And, and she can go on and do what she needs to do. She's a young woman with a promise, honey. And now she, she looks the part. So that's that. Moving on. Contessa and Jackie. Now, y'all know I love, uh, both of these ones. You know, I love to be some Contessa and I love some Jackie. Contessa, shut up. Shut up, Contessa. Contessa. <laughs> Contessa was about to drive Dr. Jackie over the side of the bridge. She said, girl, you, you got to practice some um, active listening. Yeah, because Contessa is listening to answer, which a lot of smart people do that. Okay, but you're not the smartest knife in the drawer. You're not the sharp, sharpest knife in the drawer. And you're not the smartest doctor on the screen. Just sh shut up and listen. She wasn't listening. She was like, just talking and this, talking and, and girl, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. And just talk, listen. Talk, listen. Not talk, listen, talk, 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 listen, talk, listen. listen. No, and that's what she was doing. I don't even know if she realizes that she does it, but she does do that. Um, yeah, you you listen to prepare yourself to answer, like, but in real time. Stop, stop. It was funny, but they were talking about life and the practice, and you you went to talk to Jackie so she can give you some pointers, but then you were telling her what the advice was. Shush, sis. Shush. Driving Dr. Jackie nuts. Anyway, moving on. Anila and her parents, honey. Listen, her mom seems sweet enough. You know, her sister, I, I like their bond. Her and her sister, they seem to be very close. You know, I love to see sisters that are close. You know, I just think that, that is like the most precious thing when you find a set of sisters that really rad for each other and they really like each other and they hang around with each other. I think that's a beautiful thing. I really do. Um... So that, they seem like they really do have that. Baby, the mama seems sweet enough. And daddy seems very nice. He's real passive, it seems. He's like, child, these are my girls, honey. And you know, just let them run. And she got beautiful little children. And they run. And you know, they seem very happy and everything like that. So everything's good on the home front. Baby, that Kyron came in there, honey. He was over it. Do you hear me? He was so ready, like two seconds into being in the door, he was ready for her family to take their ass back home, honey. Get out of my house. I looked at him, that little man, honey, that little man was over that shit. They was making a mess, and that shit was getting on his nerves, and he had just got home from work. Okay. He said, there was open food out. What the fuck? I said, Damn, baby, he ready to cut that visit short and send y'all monkey asses on back where you came from, buddy. And I was laughing at that. And she's telling him, just, 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 ain't no just, just. Clean this shit up. Uh-uh, y'all messy. The <laughs> fuck? So, I was laughing at that. Crack it up. But they're there to visit for too long, it seemed. Um... There's a whole uh, Rocky is is what the um, the shortened version of the the celebration that they were actually going to be doing is an Indian celebration that is the celebration of brothers and sisters. So it's the love between a brother and a sister. I thought that was really cool. Um, they explained it and everything, and it's really for the children. It's like a children's day. Um, but it really is about brothers and sisters. And like she said, when she was growing up, they didn't get to celebrate it because she had a sister. But both of them have boy and a girl. So 
they're able to actually celebrate it. So they're enjoying that, you know, through their children, living that through their children. And when they did do the celebration and they did the little ceremony, it really was beautiful. It was, they put the little bracelets on the little girls, put the little bracelet on the little boy and the, little, and the bracelet meant that the little boy agrees to protect his sister and love his sister, no matter whether they're together or they're apart, they're always spiritually connected. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I thought it was the cutest little thing. And that's, I think that's really, really cute. I really did. So that was cool. But that's what they're there for. But staying way too long, honey, because Kyron was over it. Anyway, we're going to talk about the party. The actual party. Because after the stuff with the kids, it shit just got just... We got to really know old Anila, honey. Anyway, like I said, Toya... Okay. I actually wrote this in my notes as Toya versus life. Life. Toya, what you going through? What are you going through? You need to go. I think it's time to, to lay on the couch. And I ain't trying to be funny. I just think it's time for Toya to go lay down on the couch. And Eugene, you need to take her, drive her there, drop her ass off for her to lay down. She to kick her feet up and talk to somebody. Because she is losing her goddamn mind. She really is. The self-centeredness of everything. It just is at an all-time... Girl, you, you on one. Are you okay? She's sitting over here. First, she's, still, she's fussing about the kids in the at-home schooling. I get it. I get it. And all the best. See, that's the thing. It's a little easier to work with things that are as stressful as this whole thing with the pandemic and having to be home and homeschooling your children. But wasn't you a teacher? Do I remember that properly? When Toya was, when she went to school and then her her workforce thing wasn't this heifer a teacher or do I remember that wrong y'all leave it in the comments I don't expect a teacher or anyone who's been trained to be a teacher to be having the same issues as another random mother I don't I don't and let me just go ahead I'm gonna hit you with a swift right to the solar plexus because, girl, first of all, you're sitting here fussing and complaining and fussing and complaining and fussing and carrying on with Eugene. One, you're doing it over top of your children. First mistake. One, why are you fussing about the, the burden of taking care of the children over top of the children? Don't You don't want to, Toy, and you may not even have realized you're doing it, but... Your kids are actually entering in on the argument because when the kids say, y'all are literally arguing right now about food. She was so in the fussing at Eugene. She was fussing at Eugene at how loud the potatoes was frying because she's so frustrated with life and taking care of the kids and taking care of this house and all of these things. And the oldest little boys are, y'all are literally right now arguing over food. Like, seriously. One thing you may not want to do is make your kids feel any kind of way about you taking care of them. Did you ever think about that while you were bumping your gums? That maybe they were internalizing the things that you were saying? And then you'll start to make them feel guilty because you have to take care of them? Did you ever think about, think about that? I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't. Anyway, I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out there. And then, because just like you're stressed, the kids are stressed too. They don't want to look at your funky ass all day either. I'm sure, I promise you they don't. Kids enjoy going to school just as much as you enjoy them going to school. They be sick of looking at your funky ass too. I was one once. They enjoy their time away from you. They do. I, shit, I was a kid. I enjoyed time away from my, my mama and them. 
Bye. Don't want to look at you 24 hours a day, girl. And when I was parenting, the kids, they, they enjoy going to school and being around other kids and other adults other than you. You do realize your kids have different behaviors with other adults than they do with you. They be sick of looking at your ass too. They can get cabin fever as well. They're people. They're just little people. That's all. Anyway, but let me go ahead and put this put this this to you. What I've been seeing on the show. And you know I only see a little speck of what goes on on the show. But I'm gonna tell you what I see. Put that goddamn wine down. Yeah, I said it. Put that goddamn wine down. Every time I see you, no matter what you're doing, you playing tennis, you doing something with your boys, you playing in something, you on the phone, I always see you with this wine in your hand. You do realize that that could actually lend to some of the feelings that you're having. Put that goddamn wine down. You sip it, look like all day. You helping the boys with their schoolwork and drinking wine. Just a suggestion. And the other thing is, by the time Eugene gets home from work and is in the kitchen cooking, those boys' the schoolwork should have already been done. Y'all been home all day. What you been doing all day? If they were going to school, they wouldn't be doing schoolwork at no five, six o'clock at night. That shit should have already been done. Adjust your schedule to be what the schedule actually is. And maybe that might help with some of the stress too. Because what are you doing during school hours? School should be being handled during school hours. And the schools actually have asked you to do that. The schools didn't say be over there doing the schoolwork at six or seven o'clock at night. They didn't say that. Your kids go to school during the day. They're not night school students. So those are just a few suggestions, ma'am, since you seem to be having such a hard time and it seems like it's you versus life. I'm just saying, and again, the edit is something mean serious. I, I understand that. But again, I can only talk to you about what I see. Glass of wine and dinner time teaching those two things and arguing over top of your kids about taking care of your kids um strike three now girl bye anyway moving on toya and anila honey listen these two are just alike they're just alike and they both are line steppers who are you toya to be fussed at anila about inviting contessa to her party. Had a whole attitude. You had a whole attitude about her inviting Contessa to the party. So I knew then, I said, she gonna start some shit with Contessa. I, I'm just, I just, just know it. You gonna start something. And then Anila, what are you doing? I told you, you was too involved from the door. Don't nobody know you. Don't nobody know you. And you doing a whole lot in a short period of time. And I said, mm, I, I see this going left, but okay. <laughs> then we had a little visit, honey. A little visit from an old head. Old Miss Quad, Miss Quad showed up over at Heavenly's house. Baby, Heavenly, 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 you know your ass is too chic. Of Shady. Both of you two heifers. You and Quad, honey. Quad come in there. Does she didn't drop the a confessional and talk to her? I don't know why she need a three-story closet, baby. Because I know it's short for these fashions. I said, oh. <laughs> Shady friend, honey. Shady friend. You don't need none of us to read you, honey. Your girlfriend reads you, honey. She read you down. Quad, you know that wasn't nice. Anyway, moving on. Shady little average. <laughs> anyway, then, old Heavenly said, girl, look at this, honey. Look at this. 
after she asked, she asked her, girl, what's up with you and Toya? Oh yeah, we're good, we're good. Are you? Watch this, honey. I said, no, <laughs> no. Quad got to watch that thing, honey. And her whole face cracked. I said, oh, <laughs> Her face cracked in 30 pieces, honey. <laughs> and she sat there and listened to Toya on a face, uh, on an Instagram or whatever that was, kind of live, Twitter live, what's some kind of live. Dragging quad. It wasn't that nice. Cecil and Simone in one square. Toy in another square. Talking mess. About her apartment and this, that thing, and the other. And basically, given her very much of she's less than. You know, quad don't play that. Quad. You want to get to her? Try to make her think that she's less than you. Let her catch you talking about her in a manner where she feels as though you think she's less than you. You want to see her and her tall girl energy? Because you know she ain't no taller than this. But she'll give you energy the height of Contessa if you make her feel as though you're lower in her. She don't like that shit. She don't like it at all. And it's the quickest way to get her get her dander up and get her feathers ruffled. And that's exactly what happened. Baby, when I tell you that shady queen, honey, shady queen, just as shady as any queen that I know, honey, she unloaded on Toya like, da, 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 da. I said, woo! Girl, come on with it, honey. Shut your mouth and keep on talking, girl. What you say, honey? She said, girl, she had to beg, borrow, and steal to get in that house, honey. I know where all the motherfucking audience is buried. That I said, uh oh. Baby, she got to lay in her out, gave her girl. She got debt on debt on debt on debt. Then had her to make up a little song, a little song about it. I said, but Toya, you asked for it, girl. She unloaded on her about her finances and her house and said, girl, she had to borrow a hundred thousand dollars in a personal loan to get the pool. And you know, old Shady Heavenly was eating it up. What you say, honey? What you say, girl? Come on in close to my loves. What you say? A personal loan on top of a mortgage? What she do, honey? I said, Oh, here we go. I said, this is going to be some mess, child. But again, Toya, you asked for it, honey. So let's go on. We're going to dance on out of uh, Heavenly's house and going over to Anila's party. They had the little party. Um, right at the beginning of the party, she done pulled Contessa to the side and telling her about this Toya stuff. Contessa told her very nicely, girl, I don't want to get into that. You invited me to the party. I really appreciate being here. And um, I'm here about you. I come here to spend time with you and to learn you and, you know, forge a friendship with you. And that's what I want to do. That's it. I'm not really worried about Toya and trying to make... She said, oh, yes, Toya. And that's what she's like, is this the fucking Toya show? Like, you trying to resell this bitch to me? I don't give a damn. And so she was already kind of on alert. Everything seemed to be going kind of good. They did the stuff with the kids. They sent the kids away. And then as soon as they sent the kids away, honey, here come Miss Toya. Here she come. She's just start fussing. And Toya, you have you no decorum at all? None. The girl's parents are sitting there. Now these people are of Indian descent. Okay? And you just cussing and carrying on. And just, just no decorum. None. None. And wanting to have this conversation, and Contessa told, and Anil was pushing, pushing. I said, you are a messy bitch. I don't know no better way to say it. I don't know no nicer way to say it. You're a messy bitch. Contessa done already told you she don't want to do this. But this ain't the time. But you just ushering it on in. So being as though you ushering it on in, girl. There's going to be a sermon to follow it. And I said, girl, this is great. Get ugly. And it did. It very much did. Honey, Toya gets to going on. And I'm like, really? 
is this this is really and it's all this go back to these shoes and this holiday party and the next thing i know toya goes over the side because because that's said well i'm not trying to I don't want, I just, I came for you and I don't want to argue with her. This is so old with her. Like, I don't want to be arguing with her. I'm like over it. You want to patch up something and she is determined to wage war with me and I don't, I just don't want to do it. And she just, she says, you know, we in the age of COVID and there's so much going on. People are are heightened and things are really, I mean, that's really like the least of our work. Honey, why she say that? Don't tell me a goddamn thing about COVID. I'm living it. See, you triggered because you already been fussing at Eugene about the fact that he can't be at your beck and call. And that's part of your problem. And you taking out some of what you got going on at home with other people and you flying off the handle and you sound terrible sitting there talking about you don't give a fuck about COVID. You don't want to hear it. Real insensitive, really nasty you sound right now being the wife of an emergency doctor and going on and on and on and she's cussing and she's fussing and she's carrying on. And I'm sitting there and Anila is trying to basically, ain't no other way to really look at it. And when Contessa called it out, and Anil said, wait a minute, you think it's a setup? You don't think it's a setup? An ambush, a setup, whichever word you want to use, Anila, you're trying to force feed Toya to Contessa. You do realize Contessa knew Toya before you did. And she basically told her, lady, look, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I ain't trying to be cussing and carrying on all up here in front of your parents and everything like this. But what I ain't going to do is let this petty bitch ruin my evening and keep carrying on like this. Like, I'm just not going to do it. She tried to excuse herself. And it really was, I felt like she's forced feed. And they're like, girl, you out of order. You out of order. And she's like, okay. Then Anila's mom you know, she's just doing the mom thing. She's like, come on. And child, she's up there holding on to Contessa. Contessa said, ma'am, now I'm, I'm stronger than you. And I, I don't want to be pulling away from you. And I'm asking you, please let me go. Like it was getting real physical and everything. I was like, this is crazy. And then look at this. Look at this. Because at a point when it was going, Simone went in. No, well, I don't think, Simone, shut up. Because anybody asked you nothing. Anybody asked you nothing. And now it's looking like a gang up. Now you got you. And, and I don't even know that that was uh, Simone's initial thing. But mm -mm. you got you, you got Toya, and you got Anila. And y'all trying to force feed her down Contessa's throat. Why? Toya was the one with the problem. Listen. I'm, I'm going to do a whole nother video. I got a whole nother video coming out. Y'all just look for it, honey. I think I'm going to do it at my kitchen table talk so we can really chat at kitchen table talk with Spiller Boy TV about Miss Toya because Miss Toya actually appeared on What's Happening Live with Andy. And we get really down into this whole situation about these shoes and what the real problem is about her and... Contessa and where the argument started and what's actually has the argument lingering. We're going to do it at Kitchen Table Talk, okay? But anyway, let's finish up this, this review of what happened here on this show. So she says, no, it's not about just the shoes. It's the whole thing about her 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 how her holiday party where Contessa didn't want to take her shoes off. And that's, she's like, it's bigger than that. It really is whatever. But that was that. And then I watched as, oh, look at this. That's what I'm saying. Look at this picture. Do you see Simone and Toya sitting there? I hope y'all clocked that. Because when everything was getting all geared up, I thought, first I thought Simone was kind of like just caught up. Like she's like, well, no. But why was y'all over there laughing at Kihi and, and looking like Cheshire Cats, honey? Like, like it was cute and funny what was going on. It wasn't. And it did feel very set up ish. It did feel very ambush like. It wasn't cute at all. 
at all, at all. And the more involved it got, the same, the better time you two were having over there. That wasn't cool at all. And if I was contested, I'd be mad as hell at both of y'all. I would. Or all three. And Anila. Not her mother so much, but I probably would have come. But she threw that damn napkin. She took her napkin and said, I'm out. Thanks, miss. And threw that damn napkin. I said, oh, she's mad at Anila too. She was. And she should have been. You trying to force feed it. And she should have. To hell with you. To hell with trying to make a friendship with you. You go to shit, ma'am. And take her with you. And she told her, just wait until you meet the petty bitch and you really realize who she is. And then come talk to me. I said, oh, you done pissed off the doctor. Doctor. Ooh, doctor. <laughs> I said, okay. So she's getting up. Her husband's leaving, coming with her. They go ahead and leave. And right after that, as she's exiting, and it was like, she's just going to leave like that? How dare her at my party? So you really took it, and then you made it all about you. And you really need to shut what they call the hell up. You messy as hell, Miss Anila. And you and Toya are two peas in a pod. And good luck, girl. Because Toya don't be doing all that well with these girls, honey. When she be doing all this bullshit that she be doing. These girls be letting Toya have it, so... Girl, welcome to the fall, girl. They're going to eat your ass up, Anila. And I don't think you have the, the, the tough outer shell that Toya has. Girl, they're going to swallow you whole. Just so you know. But you done got something started already. Good luck, sis. Anyway, it was a mess. I thought it was very interesting how you did this. How you moved in a shady manner. And then you made it all about you and you became a victim. Girl, you and Toya Bush chairs, perfect for each other. Absolutely perfect. Anyway, I'm glad Heavenly wasn't there. I'm so glad Heavenly wasn't there because she'd been somewhere screaming and yelling too. And they'd have been blaming something on Heavenly. This was totally Toya and Anila's little situation and I don't even know how Simone let herself get sucked into it but Toya and Anila storyline queens is that what was going on looks like it anyway I'll talk to y'all later make sure you look out for that kitchen table talk with Spiller Boy TV and we're going to discuss that whole thing with Miss Toya Miss Toya is literally at this point um, I feel like Toya is spiraling, like she's spiraling. There's there's something going on, girl, and you're doing a lot of deflecting, but we're going to talk about it over at the kitchen table. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.